Uh, good evening. So far, so we discussed regarding this uh, morphology, the vegetative morphology we discussed. The vegetative morphology includes the root system, stem and the leaves. Now we are going to reproductive morphology. It includes the inflorescence, flower, fertilization and fruit formation and you can see different types of fruits. Now we we'll see the first chapter in this reproductive morphology inflorescence. So inflorescence, oh again uh, this is given a, a tabular form what you have already discussed. So in a plant morphology you have to discuss the vegetative organs and reproductive organs and uh, the vegetative organs include root, stem and leaf. Regarding the reproductive organs inflorescence, flower, fruits etc. Now let us see the inflorescence. So the inflorescence is not just nothing but a bunch of flowers, a group of flowers are the orderly arranged. So a group of flowers arranged on a common axis is called inflorescence. That common axis is called a so a common axis on which you can find the number of flowers are arranged number of flowers are arranged. The common axis is called the peduncle and the stalk of individual flowers is called pedicels. Is called pedicel. So the stalk of the individual flowers is called pedicel. The mode of arrangement of flowers on the peduncle is known as anthotaxy. So you remember another technical term anthotaxy just like philotaxy where you can find the leaves here you can find the flowers. The mode of arrangement of flowers on the peduncle is known as anthotaxy. So based on the location of the flowers, whether it is axillary or terminal or three types are recognized. They are terminal, you can find at uh, the tip of the plant or branch or main branch. Axillary at the axis of the leaf intercalary in the middle of the stem. In the middle of the stem, example you have palistemon, you can see the photograph later and in the terminal crotalaria and in the axillary position you can find hibiscus. So, the axillary you know already and also the terminal, the calistemon is given, this is called intercalary. Here you can find the main stem is there, here you have branches etc and terminal bud, but in the middle you have this inflorescence. So it is called intercalary inflorescence. So next classification based on the arrangement and the structure and organization of the flowers, four major types are recognized. Those are racemose type, thymose type, mixed type and special type. So here the mixed one where you can find both racemose and cymose as a mixed, that is a mixed type, but a special that never comes under these three never comes under these three that is called a special type of inflorescence. Now let us see the racemose inflorescence, you have to remember this, there are three main points to decide whether it is a racemose or cymose. The first thing is main axis shows the indefinite growth, you are intermediate uh, growth, uh, indefinite growth, sorry, this is indefinite growth, but it is growth is continuous and uh, never ends in terminal flower, terminal flower never ends, the main branch is continuously growing, the peduncle is continuous growth. Flowers arise in acropetal succession, that is the older flowers at the base and young flowers towards the tip, that is called acropetal succession. Here you can find the older flowers are very big flowers and uh, upper flowers will go become very small and uh, the arrangement is acropetal succession. That is why these flowers will open first, since it is older flower, these flowers open first. So that the arrangement, the opening is from the periphery to the center. The opening from periphery center, that is called centripetal order of opening the flowers. So in decimos you have to remember two, three things. One is peduncle growth is indefinite and the arrangement of the flowers, acropetal manner and the opening is that is centripetal opening, you have to remember these things, centripetal, acropetal and indefinite growth. 
So that is a characteristic feature of racemos types. So let us see what are the types in racemos in fluorescence. So racemos types again further divided to make clear that is peduncle elongated and peduncle flattened. You know this in the peduncle elongated peduncle the growth is indefinite whereas here it is fixed and it is uh, what is called a, a flattened a flat like peduncle like this from this you can find the flowers will develop. So long peduncle and uh, growth is continuous there you can find simple raceme, compound raceme, spike, compound spike, catkin, spadix, compound spadix. These are the seven types uh, under long peduncles. Here short peduncle growth is determinate uh, quorum, compound quorum, umbel and compound umbel. And peduncle completely flattened here you can find uh, two types that is capitulum single head uh, Capitulum is also known as capitulum and branched head you can have compound head. So now let us see the elongated peduncle number one is simple raceme where the peduncle is unbranched flowers bracteate flowers pedicillate is very important point here and flowers are bracteate and also pedicil the simple raceme pedicil is there. So example crotalaria and tamarindus. In a compound regime, just like a, a branched regime is called a compound regime. Example, Mangifera and Yucca. So here you can see the first one is a simple regime where the schematic diagram also there here. You can find the flowers are arranged here from the bracts. And also each flower is having a pedicil, pedicillate flowers. And example, the crotalaria, here mango compound regime you can have is the number of branches, each branch, each, here you can find one branch, another branch, another, each branch is having another branch like this, this is a compound regime you can find in mangifera. The next type of spike in fluorescence, here the interesting thing is, the peduncle is unbranched, the peduncle is unbranched and the flowers are bracteate and flowers are sessile, that is very important thing here. Here in a spike, uh, the flowers are sessile. Sessile means no pedicil, no pedicil. Here the bract is there. The axis of the bract, the flowers are arranged. Example, Acheranthus and uh, Tulipa. These are the examples of spike in fluorescence. The next one, compound spike in fluorescence. Peduncle is branched, flowers bracteate and flowers sessile. Sessile flowers they having a branch. This you can find in uh, uh, what is called Graminaceae family, in paddy, wheat, etc. You can find the inflorescences like this. In inflorescence, this is one branch here. In this branch, these are the glooms. Where there is no flower, these are called the sterile grooms. And where you can find a flower, that is called a fertile, that is called a lemma. Above the lemma, you can find another bracteolic structure, pelea. It is considered as bract, this is considered as bracteole. And here the perianth is modified into radicules where you can find a flower with the andrisium, gynesium, etc. So it is a branched spike is called the is called a compound spike. Branched spike is compound spike. Example paddy and wheat. Next we have catkin. Catkin is just like a, a spike and it is pendulous, hanging. Flowers bracteate and flowers is sessile, peduncle is weak, drooping or hanging down, just a, a spike, a hanging spike is called a catkin, example Akalifa, Akalifa and Casuarina, you can find the catkin in front. The next we will go to this, Spadex inflorescence, Spadex inflorescence, peduncle is unbranched, fleshy, and uh, this peduncle is unbranched and fleshy, flowers, bracteate, sessile. In this what happened, three types of flowers found, three types of flowers, here you can find the lower one, you can have a female and middle neutral and upper male flowers are found. And another important thing here, the tip of this peduncle is called uh, this appendix and the total is covered by a spathe. I will show the diagram and also photograph. In the next page you see, very clear here. You can find the spadex, the entire inflorescence is protected by this green color spathe you can find, here you can find yellow color, here you can green color and completely enclose the inflorescence axis. In the inflorescence axis, 
in the lower side you can find a female flowers in between neutral and above you can have male flowers so this is uh, this you can find in arum and uh, colocasia plants you can find this type of inflorescence spadix next compound spadix inflorescence that you know in the coconut plant this compound inflorescence where you can find the peduncle is branched and flowers are bracteate and flowers are sessile a thick and large boat shaped bract is found and it protects the inflorescence in its young condition this you can find in uh, coconut coconut plant that is cocos nucifera and here you can find the inflorescence in this inflorescence branch the lower side you can find some female flowers and upper you can have male flowers both you can find in this uh, what is called compound spadix inflorescence next the peduncle becomes short peduncle short uh, this type corymb a type of inflorescence where the peduncle is unbranched and condensed and flowers bracteate and pedicellate bracteate and pedicellate uh, older having long pedicels and young flowers having the short pedicels so in this uh, tip is enclosed i will show in the next one where the all the flowers are brought to the same level example cassia delonix and uh, docus carota in this you can find this corymb inflorescence so look here here these are bracteate these are bracteate and pedicellate flowers lower flowers having long pedicels and upper flowers having short pedicels so that all the flowers are come to the same level that the original diagram is here docus carota there you can find the flowers having long peduncles pedicels and uh, in the, the top flowers having short pedicels and so that all the flowers are coming to the same level the next one umbel inflorescence here also the peduncle is unbranched and reduced uh, the difference is here all the flowers arise from the same point uh, so that they are look like a ball like structure you can find bracts of the outer flowers are formed as involucre all the bracts of the outer flowers form as a ring like structure around this inflorescence it is called involucre involucre example allium and crinum so here you can see the umbel inflorescence here the number of bracts are formed as a, here you can find involucre and all the flowers developing from the same point and having the same size of pedicels and look like a, a ball like structure here original you can see the flowers look like a ball this is called the umbel inflorescence umbel the next one compound umbel so just like it is a branched umbel peduncle is branched each branch is a simple umbel example coriandrum and carum in those plants you can find compound umbel inflorescence this is just like a umbel with the branches you can find the here here it is one branch the another branch another branch another branch like that and each branch having an umbel like inflorescence this is called compound umbel in the photograph also in coriandrum you can find different branches are there each branch become an umbel inflorescence uh, okay the next one here yeah, among the racemose types the peduncle is flattened in which you have to study the head inflorescence the head inflorescence is also called uh, the capitulum inflorescence the peduncle highly condensed condensed the peduncle is highly condensed here you can find and on which you can find the number of flowers so many sessile flowers are there many sessile flowers means no pedicel and uh, in a single inflorescence it is looking like a flower where you can find many flowers those are called florets each one is known as a floret and compactly over the discoid peduncle in the same way the bracts of all the florets are united together to form an involucre here also you can find involucre of bracts the next one the peduncle regarding the head the florets are of two types in an inflorescence one type is called a ray floret another is called a disc floret ray floret and disc floret in a single inflorescence if you happen to see here in a inflorescence the central florets 
are called tubular florets these are bisexual and peripheral florets these are called uh, the ray florets these are called uh, the female florets so the florets may be in the same class same inflorescence or in different inflorescence or different types it may you will give the different names are given the uh, heterogamous and homogamous type that we will discuss later the florets are of two types the ray florets or the female florets they are tubular in shape so the ray florets are peripheral peripheral florets these are called uh, the ligulate florets ligulate florets and these are female florets the middle florets these are tubular florets are also called the disc florets and these are bisexual florets remember the next to have the head in florescence the head in florescence is of two types one is called homogamous head as i told you already having one type of florets either ray floret or disc floret that is called homogamous head in florescence again you have here the all ray florets example chrysanthemum all ray florets chrysanthemum then you can have the chrysanthemum and ginnia are given here and you can find all our ray florets only all our female florets this is chrysanthemum this is ginnia the color is different only but because it is of homogamous head in florescence next another is a homogamous head but having one type of florets they are all or disc florets there you can find all our ray florets here all our disc florets example vernonia and notonia so here you can see the vernonia plant vernonia plant here you can find all our disc florets or our similar type of female florets disc florets the next type they can find the heterogamous head having uh, both types of florets both types of uh, florets ray florets and disc florets example helianthus and tridax so now you see the photographs the helianthus flower where you can find outer uh, ray florets and central disc florets here also you can see in tridax procumbens there you can find the middle tubular florets and these white color ray florets both in the same inflorescence it is called uh, the heterogamous head inflorescence next peduncle flattened the compound head same head you know just it is a branch so each branch is having head inflorescence is called a compound head there you can find spiranthus and echinops and some other examples also you can see here you see the lagasca mollis that is given so here you can find any, any branches many branches one branch is an head inflorescence here you can also easily see a number of branches each branch is a head inflorescence in echinops echinops this is a compound head inflorescence or a branched in head inflorescence or compound head inflorescence this is lagasca mollis and this one is the echinops the next we will go the, the cymose inflorescences so far we finished the racemose inflorescence in the cymose inflorescence also have three main points determinate growth of the peduncle ending in terminal flower flowers flow see you can find in the racemose type the growth of the peduncle is indefinite but whereas in cymose type the peduncle ends with a flower and stops its growth from the end it leaves two bracteoles from the axis of two bracteoles two flowers develop this is a cymose inflorescence basic petal arrangement of the flowers older flowers at the tip you see the older flower is at the tip and young flowers lower side so this is called basic petal arrangement and in the same way since it is the first flower and bigger flower it opens first and later the small flower so the opening is from center to periphery that is called a centrifugal opening of the flowers so three things you have to remember here determinate growth of the growth and uh, the arrangement uh, is basic petal and opening is centrifugal three points you have to remember regarding this cymose inflorescence so here cymose differentiated into four types 
one is a simple sign simple or solitary sign because there you can find only a single flower either from the terminal or at the axillary side terminal solitary pepover axillary solitary hibiscus and uh, simple dicasium a three flowered flower dicasium example jasminum and monocoecial you can find only one branch that is uh, two types helicoid and scorpioid we will discuss later and uh, dicasial sign is a branched sign clerodendron and many branches a polycasial sign example nerium now let us see one by one so the first one simple solitary sign that is a single flower pedicellate on articulated that is you can find a, a what's called a, um, a joint like this it is here you can have flower sometimes you can have find a joint that's why it is a cymos previously in his antogeny you can find some flowers are there that are they are suppressed they are suppressed so you can have only one flower later so it is a simple solitary sign and uh, terminal solitary example pepover and datura if it is axillary solitary found at the axis of the leaf hibiscus so here you see this is a axillary you can find the axis of the leaf you can find a flower from the axis of the leaf this is axillary and at the tip it is called a terminal solitary you can find in datura umetha sorry where you can find this type of inflorescence next simple dicasium as i told you already simple dicasium i told you already just the peduncle ends with a flower and stops its growth and leaves two bracteoles from the axis of these two bracteoles and two flowers develop so a three flowered some sign is known as a simple dicasium so you can find a group of three flowers one terminal flower and separated by two lateral flowers from the axis of the bracts example jasminum so here you can see the jasminum the central very big flower below you can find two more flowers this is like simple dicasium you can find in a jasminum plant next monocasial sign see the peduncle ends in a flower below which only one lateral branch develops that is very important thing and here you see the peduncle ends with a flower and stops its growth and then it gives only one branch one branch that branch will give one branch one branch one branch one branch like this so below which only one lateral branch develops from the axis of the bud this branch also ends with a flower so it is of two types helicoid cyme and scorpioid cyme so just i told you in this successive lateral branches of the same side same side i told you already again i am drawing here the main branch peduncle ends with a flower the main branch ends with a flower and stops its growth it gives one branch only always one side always one side always one side so this is called helicoid sign helical means circle spring in a spring like branches are seen example emilia emilia is a plant where you can find this type of helicoid monocasial sign the second one the scorpioid helicoidal sign as i told you here here you can have the branches are always one side whereas here you see the branches are alternately arranged alternately right side left side etc just like a zigzag way so this is called a scorpioid manner scorpion means a, just like a snake moving a snake this side that side so it is called a scorpioid sign and zigzag manner example heliotropium here you can find the branch next right side left side right side left side etc this type is known as scorpioid sign example heliotropium next we will see the branched dicasium having a branches a terminal bud having two lateral branches and they will give the flowers here that is, this is the main one it gives a branch the first one develop into a flower and stops its growth and from its a bra axis bracts two branches develop each branch is a simple dicasium this is a simple dicasium this is another simple dicasium so it is called a, a branched dicasium example clerodendron 
here also you have a scheme here the main branch or main peduncle or uh, ends with a flower and leaves two bracteoles from the axis of these two bracteoles two branches develop next we'll have the polycasial sign polycasial sign having many branches so below the terminal bud lateral branches develop from which repeated the branches repeated the branches develop here you can find two branches and again from this you can have two branches like this you can have this is called polycasial sign example nerium you can see this type of inflorescence the next we'll have the mixed types of inflorescence mixed types so here what happened in this arrangement of the flowers in one or two inflorescence types one inflorescence same inflorescence two types are similar types of same type or different types you can find so it is called a mixed type of inflorescence in which the first one is the thyrsus so in this having racemose and cymose characters this thyrsus having racemose and cymose characters the main peduncle growth indefinitely that is a racemose character the growth of the peduncle is indefinite that is a racemose character in each, each group you can have three flowers here three flowers here three three here and this group arranged in a racemose manner but each group is a simple cyme so two types of raceme types and one cymose you have so it is mixed type the next page you can see this one the main growth of this peduncle is indefinite is indefinite and the groups of flowers arranged in a acropetal manner way so that is the bigger flowers in the lower side and small flowers towards the tip that is also racemose character but each group is a cymose simple cyme there you can find one a middle one is a bigger one below which you can find two more flowers develop that is a cymose type so it is a mix of racemose and cymose so it is called a, the mixed type thyrsus next the next one is the verticillaster type of inflorescence in this you can find two types of cymose types only the same inflorescence having two types of cymose types and it begins as a pair of dicasial cymes see this is the axis this is the axis from this two branches develop this is a cymose one dicasial cyme this is another cyme and uh, here it gives monocasial branches and completely cover the central stem it is one group actually it is one group it is one group so two groups completely cover the cover is called uh, the verticel since two groups come together and completely cover the node it is a verticillaster inflorescence it begins as a pair of dicasial cymes arise from the axis of the opposite leaves later this grow as monocasial scorpioid cyme from this monocasial scorpioid cyme around the stem fall as form as a false oral that is called verticel example lucas and leonotis two more examples lucas and leonotis so here you can find uh, from the branch two two branches develop from the stem and uh, later they will develop into the scorpioid cymes scorpioid cyme in verticillaster inflorescence next another mixed one the mixed spadex inflorescence this you can find in musa musa you can see there you can find the total inflorescence in like this the flower is like this if you op open to see the each spathe if you happen to see the each page inside you can find a bunch of uh, these racemose inflorescence are there inside the bunch so a number of bunches are then arranged together compactly and form the inflorescence they will open slowly before fertilization you can see now so here you can find this is the spathe each one is a spathe and central axis we have and having a, a number of spathe inside you can have number of flowers so it is a mixed spathe next we will have the special types there are three special types we have one is called cyathium example euphorbia the second one is hypanthodium example ficus the third one cyanthium that is example dorstenia so we'll see one by one 
The first one, Syathium inflorescens. Generally, it is uh, the characteristic feature of the family U4 BAC. In those, it looks like a single flower, convex, convex receptacle, enclosed by cup like involucre. Here you can see there is the bracts are united together to form an involucre, and from this, you can find one female flower will come out. So, what happens if you take a transverse section, you can have Oh, I will tell you. So, if you take a transfer section here, there is a central long stalked female flower and it is also having a joint. It indicates that uh, there are some perianth are there, that later they are suppressed. So, an individual female flower, long female flower. This female flower is tricorpulary, tricorpulary syncorpus, superior and trilocular and ovules on axial presentation and surround the, this, around this female flower, there are five groups of male flowers, five groups of male flowers arranged. Each male flower also having only a single stage here you can find these two anther lobes. Single stamen you can see and is a cup shaped receptacle. And uh, this bracts having a nectars, central single female flower represented by stalked pistil, it is superior, tricorpulary syncorpus, five groups of naked male flowers in monocacial scorpioid syme. All the five groups are arranged in a monocacial scorpioid syme arrangement, etc. This example, euphorbia, euphorbia is the example. The next type this is the Syathium you have seen already. Next type is uh, the Hypanthodium. This Hypanthodium is example of uh, Ficus, Ficus only and it is a cup shaped, it is very interesting one. It is cup shaped, all the bracts unite together to form uh, a cup like structure with an opening. The opening is called uh, Osteole. This opening is called uh, Osteole and inside you have, the lower side you have the male flower, female flowers and in between neutral flowers and at the or near the osteole we have the male flowers, male flowers and the total after the fertilization and pollination the total become one fruit looking like a one single fruit actually inside you can have many fruitlets. So, a cup shaped concave receptacle with an opening on the upper side that is called the osteole it encloses female flowers towards the base, male flowers towards the top and a neutral flowers in between. Example, ficus. The last one, uh, this is the ficus fruit that uh, what I have drawn is the ficus fruit. Here you can have the opening and male and female and a neutral flowers. This is the female flower and this is the male flower. Here neutral flowers you can find. The three types of flowers. Next and uh, the last one that is called Sinanthium. It is just like a flat receptacle, a circular disc like structure receptacle with the central female flowers, peripheral male flowers. Here you can find the central female flower surrounded by male flowers. You can find this is called Sinanthium inflorescence, example Drostenia. Drostenia is the example. Okay, so tomorrow we will see the flower and its characters. Thank you.